السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We always praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His household, his companions We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them To bless every one of us To grant every one of us goodness To alleviate the suffering of all those who are struggling and suffering across the globe and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us steadfast on the straight path to grant our children also that straight path and the ability to tread on it right up to the end of time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannatul Firdaus. Ameen. My beloved brothers and sisters of this beautiful town of Roshni in South Africa. If I were to tell you the amount of times I was invited to this particular place, I don't think I could do that. The late Ibrahim Gangat, may Allah grant him Jannatul Firdaus, every time I spoke to him, he would say, when are you coming to Roshni? In the similar fashion, some of us who are alive here, some of my friends and some of those whom I know, my relatives, one of my my grandfather's first cousin lives in this beautiful place and I've been to visit her once or twice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who know who our relatives are to begin with and then fulfill their rights even in the smallest way. Amen. Every time they would say, when are you coming here to speak to the community? Subhanallah rabbil alameen. Well, to cut a long story short, you have those from amongst you who are well more well versed than I am not only regarding your own communities but even regarding the deen make use of them make use of them understand the value of those around you don't wait for someone to come from far away he's going to tell you the same thing that they are saying perhaps different words may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us from among those who can keep benefiting and attending his own houses all over the world. Amen. We are sitting tonight at the house or in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a masjid, a place of worship, place of sujood where we prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The name of this masjid as far as I know is Masjid Noor. Am I right? My brothers and sisters, I was very impressed when I heard of a theme, a campaign going on in this beautiful town of yours it is called fill the masjid am i right where there is a lift club that is created to pick people up who want to go to the masjid am i right yes. am i right yes. mashallah if you don't know about it now i've told you it's not only is it something that is very very beneficial but the reward of those who thought about it and the reward of those who are giving lifts to each other. You give someone a lift to come to the masjid, you get a reward for everything they do in that masjid that is good. If they did something bad, you don't get a sin for it because you did not help them to fulfill astaghfirullah that which was wrong. But you help them to do something right. Today, if you look at the whole world, we have a major disaster. It reminds me of a kitchen where the glass is broken, the plate is broken, it's all the glass is on the floor, there's broken eggs which are smelling on one side, no one's cleaned the place, the dirty plates are there, the food is all over the show, the fridge is not working, you open it, there's a stench, the, there's stale food in the oven, you open it, that's what the situation across the globe seems like to me. Everywhere there's chaos, wherever you look, just look at the month of January, the disasters that happened in this month of January, they are such that if we were to talk about them here, we would not be able to fully talk about all of them. You know of the virus that's happening across the globe. May Allah protect us from all sickness. We seize another opportunity. May Allah give shifa to all those who are sick and ill and grant them good health. Amen. Similarly, the amount of people that have died through crime, through disaster, through plane crashes, through whatever it was. Do you know what? It's too much for us to even mention. None of us knows how long we're going to live for. Whether we will make it out of this masjid or not, no one knows. But I want to tell you something. 
every one of us, if we were to walk into a kitchen that looked exactly as I described, wouldn't we want to sort it out? Wouldn't we want to sort it out? I see the men of Roshni, very few of them are nodding their heads. The others would leave it for their wives, right? Allah forgive you. Allahu Akbar. It's your duty as much as it is theirs. It's your house. Come on. You need to help. Clean up the mess. What is the mess? Imagine someone's coming to your house and the place is smelling. Minimum, you light a bit of bakhur. Perhaps you clean up your place. You have it looking smart, speak and span. Someone's coming to visit, right? Have your place clean. Allah loves cleanliness. You know, at-tuhuru shatrul iman. Cleanliness is half of your faith. Subhanallah. So we would all like to see that kitchen clean. We would all like to see our bedroom clean. Make your bed in the mornings. Subhanallah. Making a bedding is a sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu He didn't have the fancy beds we have today. But he folded up whatever he used to go to sleep. And he put it aside and he made sure that it was all looking clean and neat. It wasn't just strewn all over. How many of us really follow that sunnah? The point I want to raise is still coming. Subhanallah. If you want to sort out the mess of the entire ummah, you need to sort out your mess first. Inna Allah la yughayiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayiru ma bi anfusihim. Allah will never change the plight or the condition of a nation until and unless every individual changes their own condition and situation. We have a mess. We have a kitchen that is out of order, a house that is out of order. My brothers, my beloved sisters, the youngsters who are here today, let's clean up our own mess. The whole ummah will benefit from us cleaning our mess. So what type of mess do we have? The first mess that we all have is the mess in our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a mess. How many of us have a very good relationship with Allah? If, if I were to ask you or if you were to say for yourself the answer to the question, do you have a very good relationship with Allah? What would you say? You can do better. Right? You can do better. I can do better. And I'm not trying to make it like I'm the one who, here who doesn't need what I'm saying. I need it more than you do perhaps. But I'm sharing it with you. I'm trying to remind myself and yourselves. My brothers, my sisters, we can do better in our relationship with Allah. We worship Allah alone. We ask Allah to guide us every day. We should be starting the day with prayer. Prayer. What type of prayer? Minimum is Salatul Fajr. If I were to ask you, mashallah, and this masjid is choking, it looks like it's Salatul Eid, right? Alhamdulillah, if I were to ask you how many of us were here at Fajr, I think the Imam might tell you how many Safs were there at Fajr. One, two, three, how many? Four, mashallah. Better than I would have expected. Four. Right now we have almost 20, 30, 40 lines going all the way back. Okay, so four lines were the fortunate ones who were here for Salatul Fajr. Others might have been at some other masajid, alhamdulillah. But if I were to ask you how many of you read your Salatul Fajr, even if it wasn't in the masjid, because of where you were living or whatever circumstances they were or safety or whatever else it might have been, did you at least make your Fajr? That's another question. If you didn't, there's a mess. Your kitchen is smelly, man. Come on. There's eggs strewn all over. Clean it up by doing what? Get up for Fajr. That's the first thing you could do. All the stale food that's smelling all over. You actually dealt with it, didn't you? Your relationship with Allah, don't let it become stale. The last time you connected with Allah, when was it? Long time back. No, make it today. Subhanallah. May Allah forgive us. May Allah strengthen us. You can do it. The ummah needs you. The globe needs you. My beloved youth here, no matter what bad habits you have, you can throw them aside. We need you. You are the leaders of tomorrow. You are the ones who will take over the reins. You are the ones who are going to be serving the entire ummah. Quit the bad habits. Cut it out. You don't need it. It's not going to help you. You need to plug up and connect in that relationship with Allah. Clean up your mess when it comes to your relationship with Allah. And you watch how not only your life will fall into place, but how the whole ummah begins to see the fruit 
of this awakening that we have. So our relationship with Allah, I told you we start the day by praying. And I said the minimum is Salatul Fajr, you can do it. If you were to catch a flight, wouldn't you get up early? Well, if I were to tell you your flight today is into the Akhirah, you know what that means? You're going to die. If I were to tell you that your flight today is to the Akhirah, I can't say that because I don't know. But I could say it can be because the probabilities are there. Living in South Africa, greater chance. Living in Roshni, one wonders, you know, when I was coming here, the, they were explaining to me, you know, in Roshni, we've got our Roshni relief, we've got our Roshni army, we've got our Roshni this, Roshni that. I'm saying, hey, mashallah, it's the place to be, subhanallah. <laughs> that good community, lovely people, loving, mashallah, wow, wow, subhanallah. I'm thinking to myself, where was I all this time? Subhanallah. May Allah bless you. May Allah protect all of us. May Allah grant us and our offspring good guidance and hidayah. My brothers, it's not difficult. If I were to tell you, you have a flight to catch into the Akhirah, you would be the first one to get up for Tahajjud. If you were told today is your last day, wouldn't you get up for Tahajjud and say, Ya ilaha al-alameen. Wouldn't you do that? Calling out to Allah in such a melodious tone, Oh Allah, my last day, forgive me. That's what you're going to say. That forgiveness, you need to seek it every day. Every day. The Prophet ﷺ used to tell the companions, Salli salata muwadda'in. Every time you pray salah, fulfill it as though it's the last salah you're ever going to be able to fulfill. Do that. It's not difficult. Do it. The la it's my last opportunity to worship Allah. The word prayer in the English language does not qualify to translate the term salah. Salah is something special. It's unique. The word prayer, you don't know whether it's talking of dua, whether it's talking of tilawa, whether it's talking of salah. It has a lot of things. It could be anything. But when I said start your day with prayer, primarily salah. Secondly, at least one verse of the Quran in the morning. How many verses did I say? One. Minimum one. That's the book of Allah. It's the most important thing you could ever read, ever, ever read. There's nothing more important than the word of Allah that you can ever read. Start with one verse. MashaAllah, if you have a moment, read two. If you have a little bit more time, you'll fall in love with it after time. You'll automatically want to read a whole page. And then when you become a bit more fluent, you will read perhaps a quarter juice. Imagine if you started your day with Fajr, and with a short recitation of the Quran and a little bit of istighfar. Istighfar meaning ask Allah forgiveness. Oh Allah, this is my day. Allahumma inni as'aluka khaira ma fi hadha al yawmi wa khaira ma ba'dahu. Oh Allah, I ask you for the best that is within this day and the best that is to come after this day. And I seek your protection from the evil of this day and any evil that is to come after this day. Asbahna wa asbahal mulku lillahi rabbil alameen. We have entered the morning. An entire kingdom has entered the morning in the control and for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It belongs to Allah and we all do. If you were to do that every day, one day you're going to die. If one day you're going to die, how would you have started that day? With Fajr? With Tilawa? Meaning recitation of the Quran? With a little bit of seeking of forgiveness of Allah and some praise of Allah? Do you think that was a bad day? Was it a bad day? If I were to ask you, people say, yesterday I had a very bad day. You ask them why? Nobody will say because I didn't wake up for Fajr. Nobody. Maybe you might have one or two people. Perhaps, maybe, I'm just thinking. If someone says they had a bad day, it's either because business was bad, their wife shouted them, something else happened, anything, that's called a bad day, right? Something, you made a little accident, there was a bit of a loss, you didn't make as much money as you wanted, you missed the flight, your eggs were burnt, there was no salt in the food, perhaps the sugar was missing in the tea. For us, that's a bad day. Astaghfirullah. Real bad day has got nothing to do with all of that. You missed Fajr, bad day. Did you hear what I said? You missed Fajr, bad day. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, the love of Allah we can feel. You know why? We're in His house. You don't just come to the house of Allah. Allah places it in your heart to come to it. You have to be close. Today you're sitting here. 
It's a sign of the love of Allah. You're in His house. I can't just enter your house when I'm not connected to you. I'm connected to you so I can come and sit in the first saf. And I'm okay. I'm connected to you so I can come early at any time, pick up just like anyone else and come and sit and feel good. I'm in the house of Allah. Allah loves me. I know that. I don't doubt it. Allah loves all of us. Every single one of us. If you're listening to what we have to say today, I'm sure it's only because you want some goodness in order to become a better person somehow, one way or another. It's a sign of the love of Allah. Hold it. Keep it. Don't let it go. You know, when you're given a motivation, it lasts generally for 48 hours. If you don't do something about it in the first few hours, it will go. So if you change your life while you're listening to what is being said, it's the best time to change. The minute you leave it and 48 hours have passed, it will only be, hey, that was a good talk. What did he say? I just know it was a good talk. That's all. Why? Time passed. You know when they say that you strike while the iron is hot because you know why it creates the shape the minute you leave it for it to become cool the shape is already made random shape may Allah grant us goodness so do we promise that each one of us is going to do much more than we have been doing to clean up our mess in our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is it a promise I pray it's not an empty inshallah. You know when you ask people things, and I've said it in the past, they tell you inshallah. That means no. When they say inshallah, that means yes. Big difference, right? Someone says, will you come to my house? Inshallah. That means I'm not coming. Don't worry, you can go. <laughs> but if someone says you're coming, they say yes, inshallah. That means I'm going to be doing it. So uh, do we make the promise? Inshallah. Inshallah. Roshni. There will be more Roshni inshallah. You know, Roshni means light. I met a young boy some time back somewhere in Johannesburg. His name was Fayazan, Fayazan, if I'm not mistaken. I asked him, where do you come from? He says, Roshni. I said, you know what it means? He says, yes. So what does it mean? It means light. Or I told him it means light. But what happens when there's power cuts? Subhanallah. May Allah never ever allow our personal power that links us to Him to be cut. Say Amen. May Allah never let that happen. If your power goes for the whole week and your fridges are all, you know, messed, the food is gone and your fish have died in the tanks. Wallahi, as bad as that might be, for a moment if your power between you and Allah was gone, that's worse than any electricity that ESCOM or ZESCOM can ever provide you. Ever. Keep it alive between you and Allah. At the right voltage, and inshallah you will be going. So we clean up our mess in our relationship with Allah. Worship Allah alone. Learn more about who is Allah. Learn more about the worship of Allah. How to fulfill your salah. The timing, enjoy it. You know when you're young and as you're growing older, you fulfill your prayer because you have to. It's farad. You have to. When you get close to Allah, you do it because you want to. Very big difference. I want to. When you want to do your salah, it's very different from doing it just because you have to. When you have to do something, you go, you get it done quickly. Subhana Rabbi Allah, you up, salam alaikum, salam alaikum, and you're gone. That's you did it because you had to do it. I'm not saying your farad is not done. You ticked it off. Alhamdulillah, it's a good start. There comes a time when you fall in love with your connection with Allah to the degree that, hey, I come to the masjid 10 minutes early. You know why? I want to. I like it. I get comfort. I, when I enter the house of Allah, there is some form of, you know, magnet that keeps me here. And this is why I say, your squabbles as a community, be careful of them. They may chase people away from the masjid. When a young man enters this masjid, don't ever give him dirty looks. Those looks might chase him away and it will be written against you. You chase someone from the masjid. Welcome them. Smile at them. Greet them, no matter who they are, make them feel warm, welcome, respect them. I've learned something. You want someone to come closer to Allah? Give them their due respect as a Muslim individual and even as a human being. They'll come closer to Allah. Respect each other. I love you, my brother. I don't care 
where you're from and what your financial standing is and whatever I will greet you I will smile at you I will make you feel welcome I will make you feel comfortable you are more than welcome I will pray for you I expect you to pray for me when you see me from far something good must be in your heart not something bad that's how we should be in our ummah when we have little squabbles we fight over small small things the masjid becomes a place where no one wants to go I know we have masajid where there's politics and when the politics becomes so much people no longer want to come to the masjid because they are tired of the politics but that's the house of Allah set aside the politics throw it one side welcome the people and learn to adjust my brothers and sisters for the sake of Allah life is too short when are you going to change that there will be differences amongst us it's okay difference of opinion is allowed it's permissible Allah will judge between us. We, yes, we need to invite people to what we believe is correct, but in a beautiful way. Allah speaks of the people of the book and the non-Muslims. And Allah says to us regarding them and inviting them towards goodness. When you call towards Allah, Call with wisdom. Ud'u ila sabili rabbi. Call towards the path of Allah. The path of your Lord. With wisdom. Wise, be wise. I see you doing something wrong. I want to tell you what I've learned in my life. Okay? I see you doing something wrong. And I attack you. Chances of you changing are very, very small. You're going to get up and attack me back. You're going to hate me, etc. The first thing I need to do is to prove to you that I care for you. That's more important than anything else. How do I prove it? At least greet me. Salamu alaikum. How are you, my brother? Oh, mashallah. I really, my, you know, very nice to see you. You smile, you talk, etc. Then when you get a little bit closer, you will have an opportunity where no matter what you say, it will be taken in. Why? This man cares for me. He won't lie. You see the point? With us, you see someone doing something wrong. Next thing, the words that we use. Ulama from amongst us use the dirtiest words sometimes. That proves that shaitan comes to everyone. I might be a person you look up to. I promise you shaitan comes to me too. If there is something I am doing wrong, I would expect you out of love, out of care, to say, my brother, what is this all about? Or if you think I've said something and you can't believe it, you might want to ask me, what's going on? Is there some clarification? Is there some, something? I, th I think I heard someone say you said this or there was this or that. With us, no. We have such a big mess that we prefer to just attack and just hate and just hit. So our kitchen has 200 rotten eggs all over the floor and in the cupboards and everywhere. It's smelling so bad. We are in a big mess. My brothers, where is the respect? Do you care for each other? Do you love each other? You will not enter Jannah until you learn to love each other. That's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. You will not be true believers until you love each other. I want for the man who's drunk on the street walking, who's not even a Muslim, to come to this masjid within a short space of time and be within the guidance of Allah. What's the way to do it? The way to do it is number one, make dua. Humble way. You have to correct yourself, make dua. Ya Allah, today I saw a person drunk walking on the street or driving. They almost bumped into so and so. Help them, Ya Allah. Give them hidayah, grant them come off that bottle and bring them to the masjid. Is it impossible? But that man's not a Muslim or the woman's not even dressed properly or she's not. That is care for the ummah, care for humanity. We are lacking that today. The ummah is lacking that. Even from amongst us, those who've learned the deen, we are lacking this. We are lacking a genuine feeling for Banu Adam, the children of Adam. Today you sit here, you look at the families in Roshni. Many of you are related to each other. Am I right or wrong? Related. This man, oh, he's my cousin's auntie's niece's nephew's wife. Subhanallah. Wow. What? Sorry. Huh? But yes, just to prove you're related. Okay. Well, we are all children. We are all related. We are children of Adam. Do you not see that? 
Do you care for the people around? Do you care for the others? Do you care for them? They may not be Muslim. They may be far away. What's the care you have in your heart for them? If you're supposed to be caring for insaniya, for entire humanity, Nabi Wasallam was not just sent to a small group. If he was sent to a group, we would not have been Muslims. But he was sent to all mankind, jinn kind. That's the reason why today we have billions of Muslims across the globe. But shaitan decided to come to us from another angle to tell us, you're still different. Wallahi, I tell you, amongst us, there will be squabbles. There will be people who dislike each other. Can I tell you what it's all about? If you look at the common factors we have, there are millions of them. But because of five differences, shaitan makes you highlight those five and tell you this man is not a nice man. Why? Five things wrong. Every one of us has almost 50 things wrong with us minimum. If that is the case, we hate everyone will hate everyone else. The only time you like them is when you're gaining from them something. That shouldn't be the case. We have to improve. This is how we will be able to improve as an ummah. We are the akhlaq of the mu'mineen, the characteristics of a true believer, your concern for the ummah. The Prophet ﷺ, at the time in Mecca when Abu Jahl and the likes were showing a small interest, if they were to call him, he would go immediately to respond. Perhaps they might ask a question or two. Perhaps they might achieve guidance. Allah always knew that Abu Jahl was never going to accept Islam. Amr ibn Hisham, that was his name. Allah knew he was never going to accept Islam. But Allah also knew that he wanted Nabi Wasallam to go to him, to answer his question, to speak to him, even though he was a bad man. But Nabi Wasallam went to him and answered his questions and spoke to him respectfully. There is no one amongst us who's worse than Abu Jahl. Do you know that? He was called the Fir'aun of the Ummah. That's what he was called. The Pharaoh of the Ummah. Nabi Wasallam spoke to him with respect. Amongst us, we are so far away. We swear each other. We call each other names. We call each other animals. We call each other whatever else it might be. That's not the quality of a true believer. You can achieve more by using respectful words than by using derogatory terms. I don't need to call you a moron to be able to help you. I don't need to be call you a dog and a, and a pig and a donkey to be able to help you. In fact, if I call you that, guess what? I look just like you. Allah forgive us. Respect people. Learn to bring people towards the deen of Allah. And the beauty is when you make dua for someone, you are actually receiving that dua for yourself as well. وَلَكَ مِثْلُهُ the angels making dua, oh Allah, give this person the same. You're asking for guidance, give them guidance. Another thing, when it comes to piety, comes to piety, when Allah has given you the acceptance or ability to fulfill your salah, so now you're fulfilling five salah a day, shaitan is upset, but shaitan doesn't stop when your business in your shop, you find that there is something lacking and business is going down what do you do you have a meeting and you start thinking of other ways of making money so you start selling online you start advertising in a different way you go into different lines because you have to start selling you need to make money to survive the same would apply with shaitan when he sees oh no this person is now doing five salah this person is now dressing properly this person is now reading the quran you know what shaitan does he comes to you and says ah you're very pious you are very pious so you start believing, I'm holy. When you believe you're holy, that's from shaitan. You can thank Allah to allow you and to accept you to fulfill your salah. But don't ever think now you are a holy man. Khalas, it's over. Now I'm pious. No way. Like I said earlier, everyone, myself included, we need help. We can improve. We should improve. We will never get to perfection, but we need to keep trying to get there. The minute you think you're pious and you are now holy, you know what happens? You start looking down on others. And then you, when you look down on others, that's already a quality of Jahannam. You start looking down. This man, what's his story? Look at him. He comes to the masjid. Check how he's making salah. Look at this guy's, the way he's standing. Look at the jeans he's wearing. Look at the this, look at the that. Why look? Why worry about it? 
Do you love the people? Do you want to see goodness for them? When you consider yourself one of everyone, you thank Allah, Oh Allah, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to fulfill five salah today. Keep me steadfast on it. Keep me humble. Make me the source of helping other people to also come towards goodness and help me improve myself. That is now a true believer. Do you get the point? That's a true believer. I need help. When I come out to talk to you, I in no way am I trying to sound like I'm a little, you know, pious character sitting in front of you blasting. No, not at all. All I want to do is remind each other to say, listen guys, we can do better. We need to do better. We have a crisis in the ummah. The ummah is fragmented. Let's, let's think of reason to come together. Like I said, millions of things, we are exactly the same. Five differences. For those five differences, khalas, that's it. We are fighting and killing each other. Do you know that we have the largest number globally of any faith? In my opinion, the number of Muslims they are across the globe. We are the largest in number. So someone was saying, well, you know what? How do we know who are Muslims? I always say, you ask the disbelievers who are Muslims. Whoever they say, this is a Muslim, Muslim, those are Muslims. If you ask the Muslims for them, no one's a Muslim besides themselves. Do you get the point? When you ask a Muslim, show me who the Muslims are. He'll show you the 10 people who think like him. That's it. The others, hey, watch out. Those are not Muslims. You can't eat their food, you can't marry the women, you can't... Hey, my brother, the best thing, go and ask the non-Muslims. Who are the Muslims? They'll point at all of us together. Those are the Muslims. You follow what I'm saying? You want to know who the Muslims are? You ask the non-Muslims, who are the Muslims? They will show you. You ask the Muslims, they won't show you. They, it's just them and their little group. Problem, big problem. We have the largest number Muslims in inverted commas here. Muslims meaning people who call themselves Muslims. Largest number. But guess what? Shaitan came to us and fragmented us because of little differences we have. I'm not denying that we do have the differences and they are. And some of them are legitimate. There will be differences. But does it warrant for us to hate each other to the degree where we're ready to kill each other just because we have these differences? If the answer in your heart is a yes, you have a long way to go to understand who is the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa May Allah help us. May Allah grant us love. When someone sees you, they should see in your eyes the love, not the hatred. When someone looks at you, they greet you, they should feel the feeling of love, not hatred. We are members of the ummah. Imagine we're sitting in this masjid today. You know, here in Roshni, I'm sure prior to you guys having come up with some measurement of, you know, securing yourselves as a little town here, there must have been a few incidents and there probably are sporadic incidents here and there. It happens all over. It requires a joint effort to be able to secure Roshni. Do you agree? It requires a joint effort. You have to put aside, if there are people of other faiths who belong to Roshni, you've got to bring them along in the team because what's the aim? The aim is a common thing to secure the place. Right or wrong? What we have is more important than just securing yourselves physically. We're securing ourselves physically. For physical securing, you're going to need to cooperate. What about for spiritual and religious securing? Among the ummah, surely you need to cooperate. Cooperate in goodness. Cooperate in that which is coming closer to Allah. They will listen to you more than if you keep yourself far away. So far that you know what? You just put yourself into a little enclosure and that's it you begin to find it so difficult even to get your children married. As much as there are so many legible to get married, mashallah, so many. Look at the young boys out here that I can see and I can tell from their faces they're not yet married. You want to know how? They look very happy, mashallah. <laughs> Obviously, that's just a joke, okay? <laughs> no lines here, you know, they say you get headlines. The minute you get married, one line comes automatically. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. That's on a lighter note, mashallah. Some people become younger when they get married. Maybe because they married in Roshni. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Honestly, my brothers and sisters, it's about time we thought about this. It's about time we came together. Worship Allah alone. Develop your link with Allah. Clean your tongue. And remember, 
clean your mess in your relationship with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you know what type of a mess we have in our relationship with the messenger? Peace be upon him. It's a massive mess because we claim to love him. We say he's our messenger, but we don't follow the message he brought. And we don't even want to obey what he has taught us. And then we say, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Don't we believe that that's the most powerful statement you can ever utter? Don't we believe that whoever passes away and they said La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu as the last words before they went, don't we believe they will get paradise? Do you know why? It's a heavy statement. What does it mean? What does it mean? La ilaha illallah. What does it mean in English? Can someone say it for me? There is none worthy of worship besides Allah. Did you hear that? Do you agree that that's the meaning of La ilaha illallah? La ma'abuda bihaqqin illallah. There is none worthy of worship besides Allah. We are saying that we won't worship anyone besides Allah. That's what we're saying. There is none worthy of worship. To me, the most powerful point there is worthy of worship. That worthy of worship, we take it out sometimes without realizing. There is none worthy of worship, which means I will never render any act of worship to anyone or anything besides Allah, because there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. That's what it means. But we're still worshiping everything and anything besides Allah. Whatever makes you happy, hey, get it. I don't mind whether Allah allowed it or didn't allow it. It's fine. It, we can have it. Big borrow or steal. They use the word hook or crook. Subhanallah. Hook or crook. Get it. Why? We need it. Whether it's halal or haram, we're not worried. That's why we're in a mess. The same happens when we say Muhammadun Rasulullah. We say, I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah. What is a messenger? Have you thought of the term Rasul? What it means? Yes, he is afdalul khalqi wa akramul rusuli. The best of creation, the most noble of all prophets of Allah. Indeed he is. But I tell you, my brothers and sisters, when you say someone is a messenger, it means they have a message. Right. What is the message? You are saying he's a messenger, but leave them. Wallahi, when a postman or the courier comes to your gate and he rings the bell, and you know they come with a parcel, you're so excited, the parcel comes, your name is on it. What do you do? You just leave it on the side, say, my parcel came. Two years later, hey, the parcel had come, there's it. No, you open it immediately. And you want to see what's in it and you check it and you make sure it's all right. One small thing missing and you phone the people back. Hey, you know what? There's something happening here, man. The messenger, peace be upon him, came to give us a message. We haven't opened it. We left it. There's it on the sides. A year later, yeah, that's the message. What do you mean that's the message? Read it, open it, check it. See, he came with a message. He's telling you what to do, but you're not doing it. He's telling you what to stay away from, but you're not staying away from it. Subhanallah. And you're saying, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. This is what I mean when I say we can clean up our mess when it comes to the relationship with Rasulullah Sallam. By following his way, follow his path. Try it. My brothers and sisters, start somewhere. Start with a small thing, subhanallah. Start somewhere. And Allah will take you. Allah knows your heart. Allah knows that the heart of insan needs his maker in order to achieve contentment. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ The believers, those who believe, their hearts attain contentment through the remembrance of Allah. For indeed it is only through the remembrance of Allah that the hearts will become content it's not about how much money you have Allah tells you clearly it's not about how much money you have if contentment was connected to money Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam would have been the richest of all if contentment was connected to technological advancement Allah would have kept the internet age at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and not now if contentment was connected to facility and transport and modes of vehicles and whatever else the mode of transport Allah would have kept all of these Rolls Royces and Mercedes and aeroplanes at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam but Allah did not keep it at that time in order to prove to you and I that contentment has nothing to do with what you have it's got to do with your connection with Allah. 
Some of the poorest from amongst us are some of the happiest people we have. Some of the richest from amongst us cannot sleep except with medication. May Allah grant us all good sleep. May Allah protect everyone and give us cure. You clean your mess. See how you'll be very happy. I want to tell you one very interesting fact that you all can bear witness regarding. When you get up early in the morning for the sake of Allah, and you have fulfilled your prayer, your salah, and you sit in the obedience of Allah, Wallahi, you feel so good. You feel so good. There is blessing in the day. You look at the time and you say, oh, it's so early still. You know what? You got up on time. That's what it was. We were talking about the power cuts that are happening across South Africa. And it's not the only country in the world, by the way. You are still so fortunate. I come from Zimbabwe where we have almost 18 hour cuts almost every day. So we only see the lights for a very little while. I know of some homes, the helpers come at 2 in the morning because that's when the electricity comes for a few hours to do the ironing and the cleaning and everything turns on at the time and they go at 6. That's how the world has changed. So you're still sitting in something known as a semi-paradise, right? From dunya terms. But I promise you when we were talking about the power cuts and I was saying, if the power goes every night, 9.30 or 9 o'clock and comes back at 4.30, 4 o'clock, it will be the biggest blessing. You know why? People will go to bed. You go to bed, what else? Might increase the population slightly, but that's fine. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> May Allah grant us ease. I was thinking of it. I said, you guys want to take the power away. Have you catered for the maternity hospitals? <laughs> May Allah grant us ease. My brothers and sisters, imagine you were to sleep on time. You would get up on time. Your eye will open. You cannot sleep after that. Allah opens the eyes of those who are concerned about Salatul Fajr without even an alarm. After some time. Initially, when you start, you need an alarm. Wallahi azim there comes a time when your eye just opens five minutes before the alarm rings. You can switch it off and say, MashaAllah, who woke me up? Allah. Do you know why? He knows you are concerned about getting up. He'll just get you up. Say, don't worry, get up. Allahu Akbar. I'm sure many of us have tasted that feeling. Gets you up. Sometimes we get up for other reasons. We're awake. It's the time of salah. We're letting it pass. The sun starts rising and we still think we're doing a good job and we haven't yet done red salah. That's shaitan. Don't allow that to happen to you. No, you can do better than that. Get up for that salah. It won't take much from you. Get up. Cold water, hot water, whatever it is. You do that wudu of yours. Clean yourself and stand up in front of Allah. It might be your last day. So we clean our mess with Allah. We clean our mess with the Messenger Wasallam. When we worship Allah, we must worship Allah in a good way. And that good way is the way we were taught by Rasulullah The third type of mess, and I'm going to end with this, that we need to clean. I touched on it a little bit, but it's a very, very important issue. The mess that we have with the rest of the creatures of Allah. So we are in a big mess. I said clean your mess in your relationship with Allah, your relationship with Rasulullah and clean your mess in your relationship with other people. I want to tell you something and I want to share with it very powerful. You see today, we are seated here. From amongst us, they are white, they are black, they are brown, they are yellow. From amongst us, they are tall, they are short, they are rich, they are poor, they are middle class. All sorts of people. The day you can understand in your heart that Allah created the person sitting next to me exactly how he created me. And if Allah wanted, it could have been the other way around. And you respect that person regardless of color, of financial standing, of whatever social standing, whatever else. That is the day you have recognized Allah. Do you know why? You look down upon a person simply because this person comes from maybe Ghana. And you say, let me use a better example. You look down upon someone simply because this person comes from Nigeria. 
right? People say, hey, these are Nigerians, watch out for them. Do you know that statement is very unfair? Because Nigeria has a population of 200 million people. From among them, you might have 500,000 people who might have crooked dealings. Let, let's top the figure to 1 million. What percentage of the population has crooked dealings there? 1 million people out of 200 million. What is it? Not 0.5%. And you said, Nigerians are dangerous people. How could you say that? Do you fear Allah? Are you worried about your, the day you're going to meet with Allah? When, if you were to ask me as a person, I'm not lying to you. Some of the best Muslims in my life, I've met them in Nigeria. I'm just letting you know that. How? How can you just decide these guys are bad? Watch out, it's a crook. Watch out this. My brothers, sometimes the people of your own type and kind are bigger crooks than anyone else you're going to see on the street. It can happen. Watch out. Be careful. Watch your words. You don't need to say that. You have not yet recognized Allah. In every community there is good and bad. In every family there is good and bad. In every race there is good and bad. In every nationality there is good and bad. That's the way of Allah. There is not one single nation that all of them are bad or all of them are good. No. There's good and bad in everyone. In fact, in every person, there's good and bad. My job and your job is to get the good and to try and help increase it and to get the bad and try and help decrease it. That's when I'm a successful person. Subhanallah. So I want to repeat this. The day you learn to respect others, no matter where they come from, what race they are, what standing they are, no matter who they are, that's the day you've just recognized Allah. Do you know why? Allah made them exactly how He made you. They also have a mother and a father. They were also born. Allah chose where they will be born. Different place from you that did not make you any better than them at all. I visited one area in Nigeria and I will tell you, Wallahi, in my heart I felt, in my heart I felt, that one day I read a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he says, if you want to see a man of Jannah, look at that man. You know, I felt in my heart, obviously not a prophecy, not anything, just a feeling. That, Ya Allah, we think we're holy, we think we're pious, we think we do things, we think, look at this, look at these people, look at where they are. These are the people. What is stopping them from disobeying Allah? Nothing besides the love of Allah. What is making them fulfill their duty unto Allah more than you and I who have greater facilities than them? That is only the love of Allah. Oh Allah, I'm quite certain in my heart, we are much weaker than these people. They are the people of Jannah. Subhanallah. I visited Malawi some time, some years ago. Wallahi, if you visit some of those areas, some areas you will see some of the sheikhs there, they are more knowledgeable. And can I tell you what? Their concern about the ummah, their gatherings, the way they bring the people together, the way they are concerned about the ummah and their sacrifice, it would put to shame the sacrifices of a lot of us. So don't underestimate. When you and I go to Jannah, may Allah take us there. Say Amin. You will be very surprised who you're going to see there. You will be very, very surprised who you're going to see there. Imagine going to Jannah and you say, hey, all these guys, are you sure? Right? I don't even want to say. They're all in Jannah. Whoa, whoa, subhanallah. They would have been there way before you and I. Do you know why? Jannah is never ever, Jannah meaning paradise, is never ever going to be distributed based on your financial standing or your race or your social standing or your authority or your power in community. Not at all. It's only distributed by your connection with Allah. That's what it is. Who is connected to Allah? So my message for you today, my brothers, my sisters, Let's develop our relationship with Allah. Let's be better in this link. It is not so difficult. It requires dedication. Fall in love with Allah. Give your heart and your soul to Allah. You know, I get emails from boys and girls saying, you know, I want to marry this person. And my father is saying no. My mother is saying no. There's an obstacle. But you know, 
They can't, they can't tell their folks how far that relationship has already gone. They donated their hearts to each other before involving their parents. So it's too late on both sides. You're going to be stressed. You're going to be depressed. You're going to be crying. You're going to be, you know, suicidal. You're going to be whatever. Do you know why? You donated your heart to someone besides Allah. You gave your heart away. You gave your soul and your mind away. To who? Someone besides Allah. If your heart is given to Allah and you understand that, just fulfill your salah, be a humble person, try and be helpful to the rest of creation because they all belong to Allah anyway. Wallahi, you will achieve that contentment that even the kings and queens don't have. May Allah keep us steadfast. I told the brothers I'll speak for 45 minutes, but I think I've spoken for much longer than 45 minutes. If I'm not mistaken, Adhan of Isha is in about 15 minutes. Am I right? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us steadfastness and open our doors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to fulfill the duties that we have on our shoulders. Firstly, cleaning our relationship with Allah. Then cleaning the mess that we have in our relationship with the Messenger. Wasallam. When someone sees you, they should recognize that you're a Muslim. Your, you know, your name should be proudly said, whatever it is. What's your name? Abdul Khaliq. That's my name. MashaAllah, I'm happy. I met a brother called Abdul Khaliq, and that's why I'm saying it. And he told me, hey, I, I didn't think of this. I said, you know what Abdul Khaliq means? It means the worshipper of the creator. Wow, that's one of the best names you could have. Abdullahi, Abdul Rahman, Abdul Khaliq. Meaning all these names where you are saying I'm the worshipper of so-and-so. Guess what his nickname was? You won't believe it. It's the name of a store in South Africa. Take a guess now. Clicks. <laughs> he called him, hey, Clicks, Clicks. I'm saying, who's Clicks? I said, brother, come here. What's your name? He said, Clicks. I said, what's your proper name? He said, well, Abdul Khaliq. I said, Abdul Khaliq, what a lovely name. They're calling him Clicks. La ilaha illallah. I hope no one here is called Diskim. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all and grant us ease. I'm sure we have a few pick and pays, but it's fine. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, the deen is easy. The deen is not difficult. It requires dedication. What do you want in life? You want to hurt yourself? Go and do the wrong things. You'll hurt yourself. You want to earn goodness? Do the right things. You know, we've become very material. Very material. We connect success to money. That's the problem. We connect success to money. I told you moments ago, and I'm saying it again, if success was connected to money, who would have been the wealthiest of all? The Prophet Allah loved him the most. He's the best of creation, the highest in rank of all the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If success was materialistic, he would have had everything, everything. But no, it wasn't. Allah says, you know what? Learn, learn from the examples of those. Something else has come to my mind. A few more minutes we have. You see, many of us will go through challenges in life. Do you know why? We were created in order to face challenges. We were created in order to face challenges and hardship. This dunya, this world is full of hardship. Full. It's not empty. It's full of hardship, difficulty. From the moment you're born, you were crying. You know that? Have you ever thought of it? You came onto earth, not one baby, not even one, came onto earth and was so happy, smiling, laughing, like they were excited. Came into the world crying because now what happened? It's the beginning. You started off crying. You're going to cry quite a lot throughout your life. Challenges after challenges. You know where is perfection? In paradise. If this world was free of problems, paradise would have lost its value. People would say, why do I need to go to Jannah? This is why those who have it easy, they have all everything material. They don't even want to die. They don't, they, they're living it large, mashallah. When you're living large, it's not a bad thing if you are close to Allah. But if that living large made you arrogant and far from Allah and distant and think that you're it and you despise people, then you have pride in your heart. If you have pride in your heart, one hadith says, you can't go to paradise until you clean. So you become cleansed. Hardship after hardship. That's what you're here for. Allah says, we brought you onto earth to test you. I had a youngster tell me, what do you mean test? 
Why does Allah need to test us? I said, because Allah wants to. I don't have the say. If Allah told you he's going to test you, he's going to test you. So therefore you will have hardship. You're going to need to look for a job. You might not find the job. Don't give up. Keep on looking for a job. Even if you have to eat avocados for two months, three months and survive, you're lucky in our countries, they grow on the trees around us. Do you know how much they pay for avocados in other countries? If you knew you would want to take a sack and fly there. MashaAllah, we are fortunate. You might be looking for a job for one year. Keep on looking, it's coming. Allah knows when one door closes, another one closes, a third one closes, a fourth. Your idea, be the best person you can in your link with Allah. Leave it to Allah. Alhamdulillah, I thank Allah. When Allah opens maybe the 10th, 20th job that you applied for, you got it. It will be better than all of these. All of these, you wouldn't have known. One day you say, hey, just as well, all those doors were closed. Imagine you were ready to work for peanuts. And Allah says, no, we don't want you to work for that. We know. Wait, we want you to work for something. We're going to give you a lot. That's why my favorite verse of the Quran, and the whole Quran is favorite, but one verse that moves me. The Prophet ﷺ was told something by Allah and the message is for all of us. See, in Makkah they struggled. The best of creation is coming up and saying, oh people worship Allah. And you know what happened? They started attacking him. They started accusing him. They drove him out of his homes. They started attacking his companions. He never gave up. He was closer and closer and closer to Allah each time. And guess what they did? Sanctions. That's what they did. They surrounded them for three years. No food, no drink was allowed to go in or come out. Three years. What happened? Did they give up? No. Many of us have not even seen three years of that type of suffering. In fact, I don't think any of us have. Three years, no food, no drink. The Sahaba, the best of those who tread this earth after the prophets of Allah. They were sucking the roots of the trees in order to quench their thirst. Did they complain? Not one. Did they leave Islam? Not one. That's why they say in Makkah, there were no hypocrites. Why? Because it was so hard to be a Muslim. So hard. Nobody could have been fake there. It was hard. So when times are tough and you're close to Allah, you're not a hypocrite. Because I'm close to Allah, my times are very tough. I tell you what happened. Allah revealed a verse to him. Sweet, the most beautiful. Allahu Akbar. Did you hear that verse? One of the most beautiful verses in the Quran. Allah says, Soon we will give you so much until you become happy. That's the meaning of the verse. We will give you, don't worry, right now you're suffering, right? We will give you so much. Very soon, just be patient. It's coming. What's coming? We're going to give you so much until you are pleased. Totally. Completely. Allah says that. You know when I woke up to the meaning of that verse? One day, many years ago, maybe 15 or more, I visited Zanzibar. The brothers invited me there from the University of Zanzibar. And their budget was meager. I had flown. We stayed in a hostel. And the circumstances were tough. And mashallah, I spent a few days with them. And we spoke and we had quite a few lectures and so on. And I was still quite young. And then we had a little vote of thanks right at the end of a few days. And the brothers wanted to present me with something. They wanted to present. Now normally I'm not, you give me something, I'll give it to someone else. And nine times out of ten, that is true. You give me something, it's going to go. I mean, if I were to keep things which people gave me, I'd need a whole warehouse. And how is it going to help you? You give me a bottle of perfume now, the fourth person who shakes my hand will have that bottle. I just hope that you don't see that I gave it to them. Even if it is the oud worth 2,000 riyals, I don't care, it's gone. See, I don't wear a watch anymore. Because you know what? It doesn't help me. I want to know the time. I say, by what's the time? They'll tell me. Khalas, why do I need it? I used, to have, I used to have very expensive pens. I stopped it. You know why? 
Anywhere you go, can I borrow your pen? It's done. When they borrow your pen, you never see it again. <laughs> so the brothers were about to give me a gift. He said, we need to give you one gift. We hope you like it. Many, many years ago. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, what these guys are going to give? Not in a bad way, but I didn't want them to give me anything. That day, I cried like a baby. Brother got up. I know him, he knows me, and now later we've become friends actually, and quite close. He tells me, he speaks out like this to a crowd, he says, you know, mashallah, you came, we are so happy, we benefited, we this, we that, and your gift is, وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى That's all. Hey, for the first time in my life, the meaning of that verse struck me. My hair stood up. My hair stood up. I thought to myself, what did I just hear here? It means we don't have anything to give you. But very soon, Allah will give you so much, so much, that you will just be happy. If I were to tell you from that day on, my life changed. My whole life changed. I'm just letting you in on something that I don't normally share. I thought to myself, Allahu Akbar, look at this. This was told to the Prophet ﷺ by Allah. Don't worry, we know you're going through struggles. We know it. Soon we're going to give you. Be patient. Be patient. Just be patient. Wait. It's okay. A day will come when you'll have so much until you are so happy and excited and you don't know how to thank Allah more. My brothers and sisters, if you believe in Allah and the message and the Quran, I promise you, I just want to tell you today, be dedicated to Allah and never ever give up. Try to be the best person you are. And I guarantee you, May Allah subhanahu